Okay, here's the problem that I'm going to be doing today. This is an example of a line integral based on a vector and not a scalar. If you're interested in a scalar, then um, look elsewhere. So there's a lot here in this question. Um, I think the starting point might be to look at the, the second half of the, the, the question about this path C. So let's have a look at what this path is. So I've graphed the path, which is the red line. You can see it... Uh, Direction's important, so I'll put a little arrow here to indicate that we're moving up. And you can see the curve there. Now, one thing that we're going to need to do is to parameterize the curve. We can't leave it uh, in the form that we have in terms of uh, being y squared plus z squared equals 1. So it doesn't really matter how you parameterize it as long as it's correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, t, which I sort of think of being like time, going from 0 to pi. And then um, I'll let x of t just be 0, because x, you can see in the, in the graph, x uh, is always 0, so that's fine. I'm going to let yt equal sine of t, and zt equal negative cos of t. And if you work through all that, you'll see that it actually does, as t goes from 0 to pi, it does actually trace out this curve that you can see in red from the bottom to the top. So that's what we need to do with the curve. Now let's just go back to the, the question. And you can see we've got this function here, uh, f. Um, but it takes in a vector, x, and then spits out another vector. So it's very important here to understand that all the stuff in dark, in particular the x, the i, the j, the k, these are vectors. Um, in my case, I've got here f and d also in dark type. That depends on uh, who set the question. Well, let's not get too worried about that. But the important thing is that the dark x and the dark i, j, and k are all vectors. The i, j, and k are just those unit vectors uh, parallel to the x, y, and z axis, respectively. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that we input a vector, bold x, and that is the position on the curve, and that spits out another vector which we work out from calculating 2y minus 1 and x plus z and negative y. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So you can see here, at every point there'll be a vector. I've only plotted here five of them. But you can see as, as, the, as we move along the curve, using this function f, it spits out a vector for each point. And you can see in the problem that it asks us to do essentially like a dot product between fx and dx. And what that is really working out is the work that is done by the force, this force, this vector force, moving along the curve. Now, you can, you can see from what I've got on the screen that generally the force is against the direction uh, of the path C. And in that case, we say that negative work is being done. And so, we would expect that the answer eventually is going to be negative because most of these vectors you can see are sort of going in a direction roughly opposite to the direction of the path C. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at how we can solve this. So I've just put up first, we start by parameterizing the curve. That's what we did before and you can see that. So the curve is now given by bold XT and you can see it here. We're also going to need the derivatives of xt, yt, and zt with respect to t. So, what do we do now? Well, we want to replace x, y, and z in f of x. And the reason we want to do that is that we're going to get everything basically in form, everything down to t, because then we can integrate it in the normal way. So if we replace x, y, and z with uh, 
what we use to parameterize the curve, then we can see that we get um, f of x of t now is equal to 2 sine t minus 1 times the vector i plus 0 minus cos t of vector j minus sine t times vector k. So now we're ready to solve the problem. So we've got this dot product of these two things. We know about fx, we've already shown just above how to get that all in terms of t. Now this dx is sort of like we've seen the derivative. So dx is actually equal to d of x, uh, sorry, dx dt times dt. And dx dt is just x dash t. So that's why we need it up the top. We needed to calculate those derivatives. So we've got the dot product now of two vectors and it's done in a way that we get rid of everything except the t's and then we can integrate. So I've put here the f of x of t dot with the x dash of t and when we work all that out all the vectors drop out and we're just left with an expression which turns out to be negative 1 which is easy to integrate and so our answer ends up being negative pi. So just before we leave, um, there's an alternate notation for these sort of problems. So I'll put up here the problem that we have. You can see the, the fx dot dx um, where we're integrating that. And I'll just go through here the steps you can see to end up with a different way of expressing exactly the same problem. And so you do this. If you've got this alternate notation, you just handle the problem in exactly the same way. So that's it for line integrals made easy. I hope you found it useful.